Hey, everybody. You know, you'll have to forgive me. I had no idea that I was streaming. I uh, was playing a game. And here I am. Because I was trying to make sure I was ready to stream tonight. <laughs> I don't know how long I've been streaming for. But uh, here I am. So hopefully everybody can hear me now. Um, now I'm going to have to go look and see how long I was streaming for. So apparently I hit my hotkey. And uh, is the sound working now? I mean, it's saying here it's reading just fine here for me. It's actually reading through and my voice is coming through everything. Let me know if you can't hear me, guys. Are people actually watching you? Um, I don't, yeah. That's got to be the funniest thing. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's kind of irritating to me. Sorry, everybody. I really apologize for that. I had no idea. How long have I been streaming for? It says here for 38 minutes. <laughs> wow. I have been streaming for over half an hour, and I wasn't even supposed to be on until 10. So there you go. I was playing a game with my wife over here, and I'm just glad that my mic was not on, so nobody heard everything that was said. But, uh, well, now we're live. Yeah, I didn't say anything bad or anything. Yeah, that really took me. I, well, I look over, and I see that my chat is scrolling, and I'm like, why are people in my chat room trying to talk to me? Oh, no, I'm streaming. So, sorry, everybody. Hopefully, uh. Oh, wow, this is going to be one crappy video. I'm going to have to, oh, goodness. Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and stop this video real quick because it's not quite 10 o'clock yet. And then I will be back in just a minute with a brand new VOD so it doesn't mess up my VOD. Hey, everybody. This is Jason Akers with Green Acres Pest Control. Um... Looks like my VOD's not going to get fixed tonight, so I'm probably just going to have to delete this video when it goes up. But uh, nice to see everybody come out tonight. I hope that everybody can hear my voice okay. I got my headset on here. Uh, is it, is it, let me know if, if my sound's not coming through all right. But um, So apparently tonight I was uh, streaming for about a half an hour. I had hit a hotkey and didn't realize I did it. So the whole first 40 minutes of this video is crap. <laughs> uh, I might try and see if I can, once I'm done and everything, download the video, cut it and edit it and put it back up so you guys can have a, uh, a decent video tonight. But um, tonight I want to talk about changing your habits when it comes to bed bugs, cockroaches, fleas, uh, ants. Um, you know, we're going to talk about uh, the different things that you can do to try to keep yourself from getting reinfested. Uh, after you've eliminated your problem or to maybe uh, get your problem gone quicker. So that's what I thought that would be probably pretty interesting for everybody. And if there's any questions at all tonight, don't hesitate to ask about anything. Uh, you know, cockroaches, fleas, ants, doesn't have to be about bed bugs. The show isn't just about bed bugs. It's just called the bed bug show because that seems like that's what everybody wants to hear when they come on my channel. So I thought I'd take a, a, a day of every week to um which is friday nights that's when i do my live stream and do a show dedicated to uh bed bugs and any questions you might have about them or anything so uh anyway <coughs> if you like the uh videos give me a thumbs up uh share you know comment all that good stuff subscribe to my channel hit the notification bell so you know when i go live every week um so anyway tonight i want to talk about a uh, Changing your habits and what you actually need to do to uh, help yourself in a situation like let's let's start off with bed bugs since it is the bed bug show. Um, you get bed bugs in your home and you're not sure how you got them. Um, you find out that they've come from uh, you know a family member, a friend's house, uh, maybe a hotel that you frequent when you go out of town. Maybe you brought them in from a library, a movie theater, uh, but you find out where they're coming from, and so now what do you do? All right, you need to treat the problem like it is a, uh, well, like it is as serious as it is. You know, bed bugs are a serious issue. It's not cheap to get rid of them. 
Um, a lot of people really don't know how to get rid of them. And so you could be stuck with these parasites for a really long time. So it's really important that you learn where you get them from and stop frequenting those, those places. If you've got friends with bed bugs, even if they're your best friend in the whole world, you, they should understand why you're not coming over because you're going to bring bed bugs from their house. Uh, also, the school system. Let's say your, your children go to a school and the school has bed bugs. Uh, I'd be getting on the phone. I'd be calling everybody that I could uh, to try to get the problem eliminated. Um, it's something. It's not something to, to shake a stick at. You need to really uh, go after and make sure that these people get their uh, get their butt in gear and get rid of these bed bugs. So that you know, especially when it comes to uh, public places like schools, uh, libraries, you know, places that you frequent that you want to be able to go to, that you want to be able to get books at, um, or you want to be able to go to a movie theater and you find them there. That's one of the newest things I was noticing online the other day. There was a nice little news story about bed bugs frequenting movie theaters, about how people are bringing them home from the movies. So, you know, I mean, it makes sense. If you if you have bed bugs in your home and bed bugs are in your pocket or they're in your coat jacket pocket or something like that, you go and you sit down, you're watching a movie for a couple hours, the bed bugs crawl out of your jacket and they get into the seats, it's a perfect place for them. I mean, if you have a couch or a love seat or a bed or anything like that at home, you know, it, it makes sense that you could bring these things in uh, you know, or, or take them to these places and bring them home from these places. So uh, <laughs> you want to try not to frequent these places. You know, if, you're, if you know your friends have bed bugs, don't go to their house. You can still meet with your friends. You can still go out and, you know, have dinner or, you know, go to a place. Don't, don't go to their house. Don't have them over to your house. Same with cockroaches. You know, somebody has cockroaches. I'll tell you a story. Uh, one time there was a lady that I went and did, and she had uh, a horrible cockroach infestation in her apartment. And, I mean, everywhere you went in the apartment, the cockroaches were crumbing out, calling out. They were crawling out every crack, every crevice. By the time I was done uh, with my treatment, the roaches were falling off the ceiling. They were falling in my shirt pockets. They were crawling around the collar of my shirt. In my, Yeah, they were all over me. Um, that's typical on a clean out for cockroaches. They, they fall out of the work, woodwork everywhere. So, um, just, uh, understand that everywhere she went that day, you know, the roaches were in her pocketbook. She took the pocketbook outside. She took it in the car, went to who knows where, you know, if she went to a store, if she went to a restaurant, anywhere that she went, she could have brought cockroaches with her and more than likely she did. You know, you pull your wallet out of your pocketbook, you drop a roach or two here or there on the floor, they crawl up under a countertop, and now this restaurant or department store has a problem with cockroaches that you brought from your home. So understand that it's really easy to also bring these roaches home from other people's homes. If you go into a friend's house, you sit down at their dining room table, and you're get sitting down to a nice dinner with your friends, and then you take them, uh, they crawl on your leg or they crawl up in the cuff of your pant leg. I have one time I went to a house that had a similar problem. It's a different house. Uh, cockroaches were raining off the ceiling, like I said, when I was getting ready to leave. And I walk out the door, and I I know I picked at least 16 of, of them off of me in the driveway and dropped them down and killed them in the driveway. Uh, I got home, and one cry, and 45 minutes away, and one crowd out of the cuff leg of my boot paint, uh, right, right, right around my boots. So understand that I didn't know it was there. You know, I don't have nerve endings in my pants. And it was right, hitching a ride. He decided he would stay perfectly still for 45 minutes. And as soon as I got back home and went to use the bathroom, it crawled out of my pants. As soon as those pants kind of ruffled around in there, Roach crawls out my pants, crawls off the ba across the bathroom floor. So it's very easy to not even know they're there, not even know that they're in. Uh, on your clothing, on your person, in your pocketbook. Uh, you know, it's really easy to bring them from someone's house. And this is the same with bed bugs. You know, if you go to someone's house, uh, say you have a movie night or something, and here's, here's a good one. For those who remember drive-in theaters in the summer, uh, there are still drive-ins around. Say you go with a friend and you go into the drive-in. You're going to have a, a nice night, maybe a double feature, and you sit in the car, and you're sitting in their car, and you're watching a big screen movie at the drive-in theater. 
and the car has bed bugs in it and they crawl in your pants pockets and you take them home and now you got bed bugs at home uh you go to their house you have dinner at their home you sit down on the couch you're talking for an hour or two bed bugs crawl from the couch they crawl in your pant pocket and you take them home um and then you've got a whole mess of problems on your hands so the important thing to to take home from this is to uh change your habits uh you know if you're if you regularly visit people's homes and you know they have bed bugs or you know you've seen them there before or maybe you've brought them home you've gotten rid of them you know where they came from don't go back to that place again even if it's a friend's house even if it's a family member you know especially if it's a family member you should be able to look at them and say hey you need to clean your stuff up you need to get rid of this problem I can't be coming to your house. I can't let my kids come over. They can't play with your kids. They can't play with their cousins because you won't you won't keep your house uh, bed bug free. And I don't want to have to pay this bill again the next time I get bed bugs. I don't want to have to have the bug guy come out here and charge me all this money and get rid of this problem. Uh, you know, and they should understand that. And if they don't understand that, man, you might want to rethink who you got as your friends. <laughs> Because, you know, they are your friends, and it, they shouldn't want to in, infect you with, you know, insects of who knows what kind of insects. And now I mentioned earlier uh, changing your habits when it comes to things like ants. You know, that's a lot of people don't think about that, about this, but I had a customer one time who had the worst problem with ants I think I've ever seen. I walk in the kitchen, and they were a monthly pest control customer, so I was going every month uh, treating for ants that were coming in from outside. Uh, I come to find out that they were using a, uh, a bleach to clean their floors and your counters. And every time I would go, first thing they would do before, uh, before I was, I mean, well, after I was done, after I left, <coughs> the first thing they would do is they'd go around with the mop and mop the whole floors with bleach and clean up all the chemical I was using. And it's something that they did about once a week. And typically the day that I was at their house is when they would clean. Now, I didn't know they were cleaning with bleach up behind me until one day I was about a half hour, 45 minutes late getting to the house. There was some things that held me up that day. And I came in, and the guy was in there, and the whole house reeked of bleach. I mean, it smelled like they, it was a swimming pool inside their kitchen. And uh, I asked him, I, I said, well, have you had any more ant problems since I was here last and he's like, oh, yeah, they've never gone away. And so one of the things that I like to educate my customers on is if you use bleach around your home, it will eliminate a pesticide residual. Uh, most pesticides have a 30-day residual, if not 90-day residual. And if you're using bleach around your baseboards, around your, uh, you know, your crown, mo uh, not crown molding, what do you call it, the splash block around the back of the sink, under the sink, uh, places that, you know, cracks and crevices and places that you could treat with pesticide, if the bleach comes in contact with the pesticide, the pesticide will no longer be effective. So if you've got a pest control contract, you've got a guy constantly coming out to your house once a month, every other month, or quarterly service, you don't want to go behind your pest control guy and use bleach because it's going to eliminate the chemical. And so that's one of those things where you need to change your habit, where you were cleaning with bleach, you could use pine saw. There are other things you could use that aren't bleach based that will kill bacteria and germs. You know, that's one of the things he was saying. He said, well, I got to use bleach because that's what kills the germs. That's what kills bacteria. And do what? Oh, yeah. Peroxide works like bleach. You could use peroxide. But, um, you know, that there are things you can do that will help you and help your pest control guy eliminate your problem quicker. You know, once the ants are gone, then you could probably go up and clean with bleach. But understand, too, that ants are something. Now, I released a video about this, um, I think it was just this morning. Uh, it was either this morning or, or Wednesday. It was one of the days this week. It's a pretty recent video if you want to go back and take a look at it. Um, but basically what I'm saying in these videos is that Pesticide, pesticide has a residual, so you want to get the life of the chemical that's applied. You want to make sure, ask your pest control guy, ask him, say, well, how long is this going to last? How long is this chemical going to last? If you're doing it yourself, read the label. How long is the chemical going to last? How long does the label say it lasts? How long is it good for? Um, 
remember that the ants were attracted to your house in the first place. They're going to be attracted to your house again. They're going to come to your house again. So you may just want to change and start using a different cleaner altogether. Uh, you know, you could use white vinegar. works really well to clean up stains and messes. Uh, and then you could go behind it. If you, I mean, I know peroxide will uh, sometimes stain different things, so you want to be careful with peroxide. Use gloves and things like that. But uh, vinegar, too, if you're using vinegar as a cleaner, it can be harsh on your hands, too. You want to use gloves when you use uh, vinegar. But, um, you know, if you use a mix of vinegar and peroxide, you can uh, get rid of germs, get rid of bacteria, and it's not going to uh, affect the chemical. But what I tell people is, you know, you could use Dawn. You could use uh, soapy Dawn dishwater or something like that, but you still don't want to scrub up next to the edges where there is a uh, pesticide residual. Um, I am getting people saying that there's no sound. Uh, I don't understand. It's telling me here that my sound is working. Oh, that's going to be awful if the sound's not working. Can you give, do me a sound check and see if you can hear me? That would be great. It's saying my mic is it. I mean, it's picking up my mic. I don't understand why it's not working. Properties. Let me see. Let me see. Am I muted? Oh, yeah. No, no, I'm not. It's saying it's picking me up. You, can you hear me? Yep. Okay. All right, good. All right, so um, I don't know. People are saying they can't hear me, though. Yeah, no, I can hear you. Okay. Well, I'm getting people saying they can hear me. My wife's sitting right across the wave here, and she says she can hear me just fine. I don't know why uh, you guys can't hear me on the video. Oh, you know what? I bet they're watching it from before. Let me type in the chat. Oh, man, all caps. I don't want to do that. Sorry, I was. Didn't know my PC was streaming. <laughs> there we go. Sorry about that, guys. <laughs> oh, that's so embarrassing. I, I, You know, I only do my live stream once a week. And I screwed it up this week. I hate to do that because I know there are people out there who, who wait for my live streams. I really hate that uh, it got messed up on you guys. But anyway, um, now I lost, my, uh, I lost my train of thought. So, but anyway, um, so, so you want to change your habits. You want to change the way you clean your home. Uh, there are ways to get rid of germs and bacteria, like I was saying, peroxide, vinegar, things like that, that will clean stains and get rid of bacteria. So um, you want to try to do something like that. Uh, try to, you know, not frequent the same stores that you were going to before. Uh, restaurants. Restaurants are really big with cockroaches. You want to be really careful where you go to eat. If you go like maybe your favorite, you know, Mexican takeout or Chinese takeout or, uh, you know, you, you bring a bag home one day and you find like a cockroach egg or a baby cockroach or something like that in the bag, don't go back. Um, you know, if, if they're getting into the bags at the restaurant, you're going to bring them home eventually. It's going to happen. Uh, I had a customer one time who was frequenting a Chinese restaurant, it's her favorite Chinese restaurant, and I could not convince her to stay out of the restaurant. The restaurant was infested. And she was paying me a monthly pest control contract fee and still to this day is still a regular customer. And she still goes to the same Chinese restaurant that is still infested with cockroaches. And I cannot convince her that the place is infested. It's awful. I mean, she knows it's infested. She's brought the stuff home. She's, she's pulled the roaches out of the Chinese takeout bags. And she still goes to the restaurant. She says, oh, the food is just so good. But I'm like... It's not worth, is it really worth spending all the, I mean, the money at Chinese is cheap. You know, it's not that expensive to buy Chinese food. On top of that, you're paying for an exterminator too. And if you didn't frequent the same places that you're bringing the roaches from, you wouldn't need pest control contract at all. You know, and that would save you a lot of money. And so that's what I tried to explain to her. And she's like, no, nah, no, nah, I don't mind. That's what I pay you for. I'd rather pay you and still get the Chinese food. It's worth it. So, hey. More power to you. Yeah. 
but sorry, Brooke, if you uh, if you could hear me now, I hope that that uh, fixed the problem. I'm I'm gonna have to probably download this whole VOD later and splice it together because I had no idea that I was streaming for about 40 minutes uh, playing a video game with my wife before my live stream went live, and then looked over and realized my chat was full of people. I, I always try to get ready about an hour in advance so that I can let people know when I go live and. So I'm really sorry about that, everybody that's that's still watching. So uh, I don't know how how well this is going to work tonight because everybody comes in and they watch the beginning of the stream, and then here I'm sitting here blabbing my mouth for 40 minutes, not saying a word because my microphone's muted. So uh, you know, like I said, if there's any questions or anything like that, I am uh, all up to to answer anything. I may just do a restream another day this week to make up for the fact that uh, make up for the fact that I you know screwed it up tonight. I feel bad that you guys uh I've been I've been live now for about 18 minutes it says so since my screw up so that's about an hour I've been sitting here about 40 minutes is wasted <laughs> so I'm really sorry guys about that um if all right so if there's any other thing let me think change your habits change what you use to clean your house if you've got pets and your pets are, how do I say this without being offensive? Um, fleas are, this is another thing that, that, this is another problem that I've noticed with people with their habits. Um, people like to walk their dogs on the same path uh, in the city. Or they may not, they may just let them outside, they roam outside over through the yard, depending on if you have a leash law or not in your sa in your town. And uh the dogs frequenting the same spots, and so the dogs are bringing, bringing fleas into the house. You treat your dog, but the fleas hit your ride in, jump off the dog. Now they're in your house. They never bit the dog, so they're not going to be poisoned by whatever you treat the dog with. Jump on you, start feeding off of you, perfectly happy feeding off of you, and now you have a flea problem in your house. And your pets really didn't cause the problem because you treated your dogs. It really wasn't your fault as far as treatment of your pets, but um, what do you do? What do you do in a situation like that? Um, the thing is that you need to understand, uh, sometimes it's as easy as treating your yard. You can go to Walmart, Home Depot, uh, buy some granules. Here, let me show you. Um, you know what? I don't really have this set up yet. That really threw me for a loop there. Um, let's see if I can bring this up. Add window capture. Oh, yeah, Don, Don. Yeah, I know, I know. Browser. Oh, there we go, incognito. Okay, let's pull this down here. Oops, there. All right, there we go. Wow, you can really see my green screen on there, how wrinkled it is. Okay, so let's go here, and I'll show you something you can get to treat your yard. Granules. Um, well, that didn't work very well. Okay, and let's go shopping. Okay. There's a one, Spectricide. Everybody knows what that is. Spectricide Insect Killer. Okay, so let me see if I can move this over a little bit so it's not. Man, that, that green screen, I tell you, that looks really bad, doesn't it? Um, all right, so there's the Spectricide. Now, that's at Walmart. So you can find that at Walmart. You could treat your yard with that, and it will kill fleas, grubs, uh, ants. You know, it says it's got them all on the label. Let's see, how, how do I, uh, will it let me see it? Oh, no, it's going to take me to Walmart. Okay, but it, it, it uh, kills on contact, sees in long control. Uh, it's got ants, fleas, ticks, grubs, uh, all kinds of bugs here, box elder bugs, all kinds of bugs listed on this label. Now, the, the only thing about granules is they activate when they're wet. So typically the way that you apply these is you put them all over the yard. You spread them like you're feeding chickens. Usually what I tell people to do is get either a lawn spreader or you could put them in like a five-gallon bucket with a glove, always wear gloves, and, you know, kind of spread it out like that. 
so that you can uh, – that works really well. That, that'll that work really well. It'll kill the fleas. It'll kill the ticks. And then you come back behind yourself, and you spray it with water, and that will activate it, and that will kill the bugs in the yard. Now, the only thing is you're usually, it says right on the label, not to allow pets on the yard um, – not to allow pets on the yard after it has been treated because you don't want – the problem with pets is they don't wear shoes, and so any chemical they might absorb through the bottoms of their feet while they're walking over the yard, you don't want the, the dogs or the cats or whatever to get sick. So um, that's why it usually will tell you on the label to not allow your pets to walk over the treated surface until it's dried. Um so us usually it's with like three or four hours after you spread it. It just depends on your label. Read your label. You don't want to make your pet sick. Um, and that will help with your ticks and your fleas. You could do that about once every two to four weeks, and it will help keep the fleas down in your yard so that your pets, even if you treat your pets, your pets just can still bring ticks and fleas in the home. If uh, Depending on what you treat your pet with, typically they are treated with a, uh, a chemical that absorbs into the bloodstream, so that if the tick or the flea bites the animal, it uh, that's it poisons the animal through the blood. It uh, poisons the tick through the blood or the flea through the blood. So it doesn't hurt the dog, which is why you always have to constantly reapply whatever it is that you're treating your dog with, whether it's frontline, advantage, whatever. Um, it will slowly dissipate in the body. The body recognizes it for what it is and gets rid of it. And so that's one thing that you need to realize is that it you don't want your pet who has been treated with a chemical going out walking on more chemicals that are going to absorb through the pads of their feet and may cause the dog to be overdosed on whatever that you treated them with. Because a lot of times granules have the same active ingredient as what's in, uh, you know, spot on the neck type uh flea treatments, and flea collars, uh, both of which are designed to really absorb into the animal's body and kill the ticks or the fleas when they bite the animal. So um, understand that that's one reason that you really don't want your pets walking out on the yard after it's just been treated, uh, whether it's a chemical application like a spray, because you could get those where you could hook them to the hose and spray kind of like, uh, uh, oh, what's it called, like uh, Roundup, but it's actually an insecticide. And so you could spray the insecticide over the yard and it will kill the uh, the ticks and fleas as well. So you don't want to let them go out right after you've treated your yard. So, you know, let the dog go out, use bathroom, you know, kennel the dog or the cat or whatever, or let them be in the house for a few hours, and then they can go right back out again once it's dry. So uh, keep that in mind. Um, but that's one thing that you want to do. It, it, you know, after you've spent all this money, uh, even if you've done it yourself, you, you saw the bag's like $13. You don't want to waste $13. You want to get the most of your money. So you want to follow the rules so that you don't reinfest your home with ticks or fleas. Um, I actually, I, I typically advise people to just hire pest control when it comes to a flea treatment because it's not that expensive, and you're probably going to end up spending more getting the proper equipment to do it yourself and do it right. Uh, there are people that have done it. I'm sure I'll have people criticize me in the comments later after the show's gone uh, off the air. <laughs> is uh, They'll tell me, oh, I use this. It worked for me. You're just full of bunk or whatever, because that's typically what they always say, is they'll tell me, they'll say, you don't know what you're talking about. My sister's uncle's best friend used diatomaceous earth to kill bugs in their carpet all by themselves, and you're just crazy. You're just trying to tell people to hire you. But if you don't hire me, I'll still tell you how to get rid of the bugs yourself. <laughs> so that's nothing to do with it. <laughs> but, uh, you know, I'm honest. It, I think you could save money. Uh, killing bed bugs yourself. Uh, I don't think you're going to save money uh, getting rid of cockroaches or fleas yourself. Typically, a flea treatment is a one-time treatment. Um, if if your pest control guy is using an IGR, they can usually get rid of fleas with one shot. Uh, if they're uh, getting rid of roaches, it can take six months to a year. Expect that. That's normal. Um, I know a lot of people nowadays want instant gratification when it comes to pest control, but the truth is is that it does take a little while to get rid of uh, roaches. Uh, it takes a little while to get rid of bed bugs. Um, a lot of people want to be able to get rid of bed bugs right away, and I understand because they're biting you, but it could take three month, three to six months to get rid of bed bugs. Um, it's just the way they are. Y you're dealing with a insect that has a possibility of being immune to what you apply in the house, and so uh, the, with the same as cockroaches, with their immunities, you're going to have problems 
after the first treatment. They're not going to disappear after one treatment. Now, I've been able to get rid of bed bugs off after one treatment, but it's not a very infested house. You know, they may have just caught them right before they became a problem. And so, uh, you know, they, they were able to get it before it became a serious problem. Now, I've gone into homes where houses were completely and utterly infested, uh, living around, like, uh, zippers of, of, of uh, uh, futon mattresses, um, uh, you know, box springs, infested box springs, um, just really, really serious problems where it has taken past, uh, past three visits sometimes, even four or five visits. Um, in fact, you know, truthfully, if you can take the covers off of your futon mattresses, you want to try to wash those too. I know I've talked before about bed bugs on your beds. If you have a problem with, if, if, if the bed bugs are on your bed, and you have the ability to remove anything on the bed without damaging your bed and laundering it, you should do it. Uh, if it's like a futon cover, a lot of those, um, because it's just a mattress, a lot of them have a cover on them that you can take off and wash. You want to do that. Um, bed bug bags, you want to take those off. You want to get rid of them. You want to treat your mattress. Now, if you have to have them on, if you know you don't have many bed bugs in your mattress, like I have one customer she has them covering her beds because she's had bed bugs before. She eliminated her bed bug problem, and then she bought bed bug bags, put them all over the beds because she was that paranoid she was going to get them again. She bought brand new mattresses, covered the beds, and that way if she ever got bed bugs in the future, they would get on those bed bags before they got on her mattress, and then she just has to throw away the bed bags. She doesn't have to worry about them infesting her mattress. And so that's a really good idea. Yeah, I have talked bad about bed bag, uh, bags before. I've actually got a video on my channel uh, advising people not to use bed bags. And the reason that I advise people not to, if you already have a problem, you don't go and put bed bags on your beds because all you're going to do is seal your problem up inside the mattress. Uh, and that's not good because if, if ever a hole is ripped in that mattress within a year and a half to three years, a hole is ripped in there, then the bed bugs are going to come out because adults can live 18 months or longer without a blood meal. Um, now, I know a lot of people have commented on my videos where I've mentioned this because a lot of people don't realize that bed bugs can last, uh, you know, up to three years without a blood meal. Now, I honestly cannot remember the, I, I watched a documentary on bed bugs. You could probably find it on YouTube. It may have been Netflix. It's been a few years since I watched it. But uh, there was a scientist that did a research study on bed bugs, and I have not been able to find it. I really need to be able to find it so I can show people what this guy has said. But he was the one that has been able to get them to live for three years without a blood meal. That's not standard. Usually it's a year to a year and a half without a blood meal. That's the typical length. I know sometimes people have said three months to six months without a blood meal, but it's typical a year and a half, about 18 months at, long, uh, at the length. And the thing is, when they're in your house, they can live longer because they're in your house. They're not in the wild around animals and things that would kill them. Uh, you know, they do. They will come on birds and bats. They'll, they'll get into your house that way. Uh, typically those are bat bugs, but you can get bed bugs that way as well. Um, so just understand that, and there's not that big a difference between bed bugs and bat bugs, but they can both feed off of you, uh, just like bed bugs do. So, um, now nah, I can't remember where I was going with that at all. My train of thought's gone. So, <laughs> oh man, I'm so irritated that my channel got messed up tonight. I'm so sorry, guys, for those that were wanting to catch me when I went live, and then they were watching me just talk and talk and talk and talk about nothing at all because my lips were moving, but you couldn't hear anything I was saying. Uh, I wasn't talking about bugs anyway. I know. I was talking about bugs in a video game. I wasn't talking about bugs in the I, – I don't kill bugs in a video game. I'm not a, I'm not a programmer. So uh, <clears throat> put nice, sturdy casings on our beds, mattress, box springs. That will not be coming off for four years or so. Well, that's all right. You know, I, I don't, I'm not completely against bed bags. I know I'm against them when a house is already infested. The reason that I'm against them when a house is already infested is because there have been studies that have shown that bed bugs can bite through bed bags. 
Um, I couldn't tell you the label. I couldn't tell you the exact, you know, brand. But there are cases where bed bugs were able to bite through the fabric um, and live inside the bag. And if the bag ever did get a hole in it, the bed bugs, no matter how long, because as long as they can get a blood meal, they can live in there indefinitely. So you need to understand that uh, as long as the bags are sturdy and they're not going to get a rip and the bed bugs can't bite through them, then that's fine. There are some bed bug bags that are actually treated, the inside of them are treated with permethrin, and that will kill bed bugs. Now, the problem is, is permethrin doesn't last very long as a residual. I don't know how it would last when treated on like one of those casings like that. I have no idea how that would be, uh, how that would be effective. Um, but I know they do make them. There are actual chemical treated bed bags that you can wrap around your mattress and your box spring that will kill the bed bugs when they emerge from the mattress and box spring and try to get out of those bags because they're crawling around on the inside where the chemical is. So I don't know. I'm, I, you know, I could look it up. I'm not really sure exactly even what it's called, so I don't want to waste your time trying to look for something like that. You guys can look, and if you find something like that, don't hesitate to leave it in the comments below after the video goes live because uh, I know, I mean, after it goes after the VOD goes live, I should say, it's after the live chat has already ended because uh, my live chat won't allow for links to be posted in chat so <coughs> so people don't come in and just spam a whole bunch of stuff. But um, anyway, if, uh, yeah, if you guys or anybody finds a bed bag that actually is treated on the inside, I know it's something that they make. They were talking about it at one of my, uh, uh, I go to these different seminars and stuff every so now and then to keep my license renewed and all in Virginia. You have to every other year to keep your license going, to get your hours in. And uh, they were talking about them there. It was a product somebody was selling, but I can't remember. It's been like four years ago. So, but uh, but yeah, Brooke, if, if, if that's working for you, then that's great. You know, I'm all about whatever works. Uh, you know, there are people that have done heat treatments that have worked. There are people that have done diatomaceous earth, and it has worked. Um, it's not the standard, but it does happen. Uh, you know, there are different pest control guys out there that do heat treatments, and they have really good success. They're very expensive, but, you know, I don't think it matters to much people. If As long as they get rid of the bed bugs, they don't care. Uh, it's money well spent. The problem that I have, and this is what's what I've been gotten on the most by, you know, people in my field, are when heat treatments fail, I have a big problem with heat treatments and the failure of heat treatments. I wouldn't even mind doing a heat treatment if I knew that it was going to be successful 100%. The problem is heat treatments don't have a 100% success rate, where as long as you are very thorough with your pesticide, you may have to come, you know, three, four, five visits, but you get rid of the problem. That's what's most important. And even after you've come to the house three, four, five times, it's still cheaper than a heat treatment, one heat treatment. Um David says, good evening, I'm back. What's your opinion on a proper bed bug inspection on a vacant apartment unit? What are the key areas to look for signs of activity? Oh, hey, Motorhead. <laughs> um, yeah, I agree with you, Brooke. Yeah, it may, it may have helped you get rid of them. Um, I wouldn't take the bed bags off. They may, you may not have actually gotten rid of them. You may just have them trapped inside that bed bag. But, uh, David, what I was going to say is... is um, the the best way, all right, the best way to, to, oh, man, I have got really good pictures. I think they're on my phone. Um, inspecting bed bugs. Let me see. I, I'm going to try to do something awful here and show a picture on my phone without bringing it up in the browser. Um, man, if I could find it. Okay. Is that going to show? Oh, look at that. Okay. That is a box spring. That's the bottom of a box spring. You can see where the staples were. See where the bed, that's bed bug poop. That's all bed bug poop. Let's see if I can get, there's a good one there. Oh boy, it won't focus. Well, I haven't had time to take these off my phone yet. But this was a bed bug job that I did. Um, you want to check around the staples of your box springs. You want to check uh, the the uh, headboard, the footboard, 
um, if there is one, you want to check those. You want to check where the metal bed rails attach to your headboard and your footboard. They usually will kind of buckle in there. You want to look in there real good with your flashlight. An exterminator should always carry a flashlight. It's the number one tool of an exterminator is a really good flashlight. Um, so that's what I would recommend. Um, like I'm in a va vacant apartment unit, and where do you start to do a proper bed? Always the beds. You always check the beds. Uh, if it's if it's vacant, then you go to where the headboard would be against that wall. Um, pull, look behind the baseboard. You know, if it's vacant and you're doing like maintenance, or I mean, I don't know if you're pest control, you may not be able to do this, but uh, get permission from your uh, landlord that you're dealing with, or property management that you're dealing with. Pull the baseboards back away from the wall a little bit. I've done this. I was actually in an apartment one time where they had one of those glue-on baseboards, and the bed bugs were living behind the glue-on baseboard. When I pulled it away from the wall, there was like 100 bed bugs behind that glue-on baseboard um, waiting for whoever would move the bed in behind you know, the guy that had left. They had just left out of the apartment. They wanted to make sure the apartment was clear of bed bugs, and so they had me go in, and I had the landlord with me, and he's like, oh, yeah, look wherever you need to look. And actually, this baseboard was peeled back a little bit off the wall already, and I just kind of peeled it back a little more, and I showed the landlord I, with my flashlight. I shined it down in the hole. And I was like, look at all those bed bugs, and they were right there, right? And this right where the headboard would have sat where the bed was because you could see the imprints on the floor on the carpet where the bed was sitting before. And so you can find bed bugs there. That's where I usually recommend looking behind all of the baseboards, crown molding. If there's any curtain rods left, pull them down off the wall. Look inside the curtain rods. Uh, in really severe cases, bed bugs love to retreat to curtain rods, especially hollow ones. Um, they like to get behind, yes, pictures. Uh, oh, those are great pictures. I uh, speak about vacant units, nothing inside apartments. Yeah, so the, um, yeah, if you, if you get in, like if they have any pictures hanging on the wall still, they'll get behind pictures. Um, you know, a lot of times people will leave their curtains behind. Take the curtains down. Look inside the pleats of the curtains. You know, check those areas. Um, door frame, uh, the corners up around crown molding, especially the, uh, you know, your, uh, some people will have those sliding doors in their, in like accordion doors for their closet. The accordion door will, uh, the, the track that holds the accordion door in place, they like to get inside those tracks. Um, boy, let me see other places that they could hide. Anywhere that there's any kind of drywall mud that's coming off the wall, cracks in, uh, cracks in the plaster. Um, <coughs> check bathrooms, baseboards. All baseboards through the house should be checked. Anywhere a couch has sat before, look behind where the couch would sit next to the wall there. Those are places you're going to find bed bugs. And if you, if it all else fails, hire a bed bug dog. You know, there are people out there that have dogs that will sniff bed bugs nowadays, and they can smell the odor. They're really good at that, and so they will go around uh, sniffing the baseboards, sniffing the outlet covers. Uh, you can take – I wouldn't waste a whole lot of time with the outlet covers unless you just – you haven't found any yet, and you're sure that the apartment has bed bugs in it. Take the outlet covers off. Um, you know, usually just held in by one or two screws. Take them off. Look behind the outlet cover. Sometimes they're in the outlet cover itself. Uh, they may be in the unit next door. If it's an apartment building and it's a vacant apartment, uh, knock on the door. Tell the tenant that you're given free inspections. Go in and look if they let you in. You know, usually people, if it's free, then they'll let you come in and look around, you know, uh, especially if you got the landlord there with you. You know, if the landlord calls ahead, says, hey, look, exterminator's coming today and he wants to check the apartment for bugs just to make sure you know we've had this guy move out. And if, you know, if you'll let us come in, you know, we'd really appreciate us letting us come in. So. Yeah, I I could I could probably do a video maybe one day. I've got all these things people want me to do. Um I did follow me on oh that's one this one thing I'm gonna I'm gonna shameless plug myself. Follow me on Twitter because I do add videos to my Twitter that are not on my YouTube. Um mainly they're like little snippets. Like the other day I was in Walmart. I just started doing this, but the other day I was in Walmart and I was showing you different chemicals you could use for cockroaches. 
Um, I do things like that on my Twitter account. It's at GreenAcresPC. And usually I do take those videos and compile them into movies that I put on my YouTube channel. Nice, you know, like a 20-minute VOD, VOD or maybe a 15-minute VOD or something like that. So you can catch those on my Twitter. It's usually no more than 30, 30 seconds to a minute long, just little snippets here and there of things that I found. So just so you know, if you follow me on Twitter and you have any questions about bugs, you can send them to my Twitter. I did have somebody just a couple days ago tweet me a few questions that they had. So you could always tweet me if you have any questions at all. And you could tweet pics, which is what I've got on my screen right there. If you have any pictures that you want to send me, uh, if you're wondering on what this bug looks like or if this is a bed bug or if this is a cockroach or, you know, you could send them to me. I have people send me pictures all the time. I have people send me pictures on Facebook. I don't recommend using Facebook, but, you know, if you want, if you don't use Twitter and you want to use Facebook, you can always send me pictures there. The reason I say I don't really use Facebook a whole lot, it's, it's just not, I don't find it to be as user-friendly when it comes to pictures as Twitter. So if you have any questions at all, I, I would recommend you send me a tweet. But if you don't use Twitter, I'm always on Facebook too. I, you know, I leave that open for people as well. So, but yeah, I've actually got a video coming up live here pretty soon about uh, how to dust properly for both cockroaches and bed bugs. You could use the exact same technique for both. I'm, I'm going to go into that. And I've got a, a couple do-it-yourself videos that I plan on putting up as well on how to mix a uh, roach bait and an ant bait yourself from things you can buy at, you know, Walmart. Um, and it will kill cockroaches and it will kill ants. So I'm going to put that up uh, in probably a couple weeks. But this coming up this Monday, I'm going to show how to dust properly for bed bugs, uh, ants, uh, cockroaches, and things like that. So you can look forward to looking up, looking that up and uh, seeing me do that. But uh, yeah, so anytime I have a little snippet here or there, I'm planning on sending it over to Twitter so you guys can see some stuff a little early before I actually get the video go live. I know I've had a lot of issues lately. I've been real busy. Uh, my wife got a job. And so I've been really, really uh, busy with the kids and juggling my own job. <laughs> and so it's been one of those things where I'm kind of like, you know, I, I, my schedule's changed a lot. I can't do as many videos as I used to be able to do. So I really appreciate you guys sticking around and uh, checking out my channel and watching my stuff that I put up. Um, but anyway, yeah, so uh, dust, dusting inside wall outlets is a bunch of German Germans inside the outlets. That's true. Uh, I'll tell you, <coughs> a wall outlet that, all right, you got a kitchen, and there's roaches in the kitchen. And you're having a problem. You've, you've gone to the house for two or three months. And, and this is for pest control techs out there. Hey, this could be for anybody. But you've been treating the house for two or three months. And the roaches are less and less every time you come. So you know it's not a problem with resistances. But you can't find where the roaches are coming from. Uh, un a, a lot of people will plug their phone charger on their kitchen counter they'll go in in the morning first thing in the morning they make their coffee they unplug their phone and they get ready for work and they go out the door all right that phone charger is a transformer any transformer and they're not optimus prime or bumblebee or any of those i'm talking about electricity transformers sorry that's a bad joke anyway <laughs> um they build heat roaches love heat so anything that's plugged in the wall, like a transformer, that's going to constantly pull. See, the difference between a transformer and an outlet and an actual plug is that a transformer typically transforms AC current to DC current. So it's always pulling AC current. It's not like when the, like your, um, a lot of things will actually turn off. When you turn it off, it stops pulling current. Transformers always pull current, so they always build heat. They're a constant heat source, and the roaches will live behind those because people don't typically ever unplug them. They plug it in, they leave it in, and so you can unplug those and sometimes find roach eggs, baby roaches, uh, right there behind the transformer, wedged up in the wall. And if you take that one outlet cover off, you'll find them living around inside your outlet cover. And that's a really good place to dust or bait uh, inside the wall where it's not going to come into contact with humans and it's definitely going to come into contact with your roaches and explain to your customer uh, you know you pull the thing off the wall and the roaches go everywhere you tell your customer uh, take that thing out of there 
and leave it sitting on the counter at night. Don't plug it in somewhere else. Don't plug it in right where the roaches are living because roaches prefer to live in the kitchen. And yes, I do have an Instagram, uh, Don. I, I uh, you can follow me on Instagram. Um, I can't remember what my Instagram is. Uh it's in the it's in the comments below. It's in the. I don't think so. It is. Oh, there we go. I'll leave the link here. I'll copy that, and I'll paste it. This is my Instagram. I got some pictures there too. I, I put pictures there of uh, bed bugs, uh, spiders, things like that that I found. So that's my Instagram. Um. But yeah, plug-in chargers are the worst. They really are. What is this here? Oh yeah, Don. I got you. <laughs> Said you're following me. If that's still, if that's you, I got you. But um, but yeah, and my uh, Twitter is actually I could copy this in here, put this in the in the chat as well. Paste. There's my Twitter, and my Facebook. I think this is my Facebook. I hope it is. Facebook. There. So that that's the top three ways to meet me. Um, get a hold of me. I've got a Reddit where I answer questions too, but I hardly ever do that. Um, I'd much rather answer questions live when people ask. But yeah, if you pull a charger away from the wall, you could find the bugs crawling in. I'll tell you another place that roaches love to get into are coffee pots. Um, I have found in, in troublesome kitchens where the roaches were just nagging. Mainly, now when I say it's a nagging roach problem, they're not infested. It's not totally infested. They're having like three or four roaches here or there. It's not a, uh, a lot of bugs in the kitchen. They're not raining off the ceiling, falling in your hair and everything every time you go. They may have done it the first time, but as you go more and more and more, the customer may be saying, yeah, I haven't seen any at all, but I did see three or four yesterday, or I saw three or four last week. You know, So keep that in mind that it's pro they're probably coming from an appliance. They like to get into dishwashers. They like to get into uh, coffee pots. If you take a carafe out, tip co make sure it's empty. Don't spill water all over somebody's counter. Pick a coffee pot up and look underneath. Where the hot the uh, hot plate is, that builds a lot of heat, and usually there's a grate underneath there in order to allow the heat to escape, so it doesn't build up heat and, and melt the coffee pot. Um, a lot of times the roaches will be living in there, and you can use roach baits in those little cracks. You don't want to fill it up because you want to make sure the coffee pot can still, you know, the diffusion in order to get rid of the heat. So you put a little bit of bait in those little cracks, and then put your coffee pot back right where it was. Nobody knows there's bait there, but the roaches will find it, and you basically turn that coffee pot into a bait station. Or you could get some little bait stations that have some, some decent bait, like fipronil or something like that in them, and you could put those up in the corner behind the coffee pot where the uh, roaches are going to find it. But you don't typically want to put those places where people are going to get a hold of them. Uh, let's see. James says from Arizona, this is Jim. I have PTSD from these. Oh, yeah, you're talking about the bed bugs. Um, roaches love coffee. Interesting. What about grease on stoves? Oh, yes, they love grease. Um, I've pulled stoves out away from the wall that have grease so thick on the side that they ha it has to be chiseled off with a screwdriver or a chisel or something to get it off of the side, and the roaches will be living on it and in it. Uh, it's not that they love the coffee. They like the coffee pot. They, because it's plugged in, usually people never unplug their coffee pot. It's a constant source of heat. People will leave the coffee pot on because a lot of them have a safety now where it'll automatically turn off after an hour or two. Uh, I'll tell you, the worst coffee pots ever, ever for cockroaches are cure eggs. They have a constant water source in the back. There's always water in that thing. German roaches love water. People say, oh, I told Billy not to take that food back to his room because he was going to take roaches back there. They're not attracted to food. They're attracted to water. And so if Billy has roaches in his bedroom, he's probably taking water back and leaving it on the, on the uh, nightstand table every night. Maybe Billy likes to drink water in the middle of the night. So the roaches learn there's water there on that nightstand every night. They'll start living in that nightstand. Or maybe Billy has a, a turtle aquarium or a... Uh, you know, a, a fish aquarium or something like that in his bedroom where he's got his little pets in there and the roaches will start living around the aquarium. They love water. 
and coffee pots are a constant source of water. The roaches learn about it, and they start living on them and living in them. So uh, if you're having problems getting rid of roaches in the kitchen, check your coffee pot. Check your dishwasher. Those are places that the roaches love to live at in the kitchen. Yes, they like to get into the overhead microwaves. They like. Uh, David says, I mean, I'm, just in case everybody can't read the whole chat. Uh, David says, yesterday I was treating an apartment and baiting the kitchen. I found, and I am not going to say that. I'm going to say German roach eggs because I don't know. I can't pronounce that. I never have been able to pronounce that word. I've heard people pronounce it three or four different ways. So I'm just going to say egg casing. <laughs> roach egg casing. <laughs> uh, stuck between the overhead microwave and the wall there the female roach had dropped it that's true i i had a customer one time who had the female carried the eggs up until the day they needed to hatch the lady killed the roach caught it put it in a plastic baggie for me to see when i was actually supposed to go there two days later so it was like over the weekend she caught it on like a friday and i was due there monday and uh, she called me over the weekend. She said, I caught a roach. It's dead. It's in a baggie. I saved it for you so you could see what it looks like. So, you know, to find out what it was. And I got there. It was a German cockroach. The babies had hatched and they were eating the female roach in the bag. So the, the female had carried that egg sac all the way up until the day it needed to hatch. A lot of times the female roaches will do that because the males will eat the babies. And so in order to protect the babies, she will uh, carry them up until they need to hatch. And so that's that's very typical of German cockroaches as well. Um, yeah, it is important to keep your place clean. Now, I've been in places, uh, that's Westwood said it's important to keep your place clean. It does help. There's three things that uh, feed German cockroaches. Harborage, food, and water. If you can eliminate one of those three things, you're going to eliminate your problem. It's not possible to eliminate any one of those, but harborage is the one that you can do the easiest. Um, what that do, what what do I mean by harborage? Places roaches can live. So, if you've got a bunch of stuff just like crammed around, garbage bags and stuff, you haven't taken out your garbage in maybe two or three weeks. It's starting to pile up. It's getting nasty. Um, not only is that providing food for the cockroaches, but it's also providing a place they can live. Um, <coughs> Don't try to try to keep your counters clean. Try to keep your dishwasher empty. Don't leave food. Don't leave dishes caked on in the dishwasher. Roaches will go in the dishwasher. They will eat the food off the dishes. They'll live off of the water in the dish in the dishwasher. And so you'll want to try to you know as soon you put your dishes in the dishwasher, you turn it on, you wash your dishes. If it's just two or three dishes, think about washing them by hand and putting them in the cabinet. You know, dry them off, put them in the cabinet, rather than uh, right. A lot of people will just put their dirty dishes in the dishwasher and wait until the end of the day and then do their dishes. Uh, don't do that. Just wash them. If it's just two or three dishes, just wash them. Put them away rather than keeping the food and water out. Now, once you get rid of your roaches, you know, you can take a day if you need to, but you need to get rid of your roaches first. That's the, that's the top priority is getting rid of the roaches. And so I have told people that before where I've gone in and, you know, their dishwasher is full of dishes. You open the door and it smells and it's just, it's like, wow, these dishes, how long have they been sitting in here? And the lady may say, well, they I, we had a party Friday and, we just didn't really use a whole lot of dishes, and so we've got, got them over the weekend. We don't like to do dishes over the weekend. And so there will be a dishwasher full of dishes, but the first few dishes were put in there on a Friday night. So uh, those dishes have been sitting there for three days. And so that's – and you'll find that the roaches are living around the uh, – they'll live around the rather stripping of a dishwasher, and uh, especially if it's a constant source of food and water for them, they, they like to live in dishwashers. Uh, you can dust around behind a dishwasher. That'll help a lot getting rid of them there. And you can also treat the uh, the weather stripping that goes around the outside of the dishwasher. You can peel it open a little bit and put a little bit of uh, bait inside that weather stripping in the crack there. And the roaches will find it and they'll eat it. You can do the same thing to a refrigerator. Um, I always tell people that pull your refrigerator out every month. Uh, you know, try to treat around the compressor motors and stuff of the refrigerator because the heat. A refrigerator is designed to take the cold. It takes the heat out of the food. That's how it refrigerates the food, is it removes the heat and leaves the cold behind. So uh, it pushes the heat out somewhere, and usually it's underneath the refrigerator. It pushes it out and out the back. 
So if you've got an old refrigerator that actually has the grate on the back, um, roaches will live on that because it's a constant source of heat and they'll live underneath the bottom around the compressor. So you'll want to treat those areas with a bait or um, you know, a dust and maybe boric acid, something like that. So there's constantly something there that is uh, going to be able to kill your roaches in those spots. Um, and always pull it out, always. And if you pull it out and you don't find roaches, pull it out next month too. That doesn't mean they won't be there next month too. So always pull your refrigerators out and check underneath your refrigerator. Um, and those are the, the co top places in the, in the kitchen, the coffee pot, the refrigerator, and the microwave, uh, and dishwasher. If I have a dishwasher, not everybody has one. I was born with two. See, they're right here. So, <laughs> but uh, anyway, well, if there's any more questions, I'm, uh, I've been live for about an hour and a half, but really only answering questions for about an hour. So, <laughs> like I said, sorry again for the beginning of this video being all choppy and screwed up like that. Uh, like I said, if there's any more questions, don't hesitate to give me a, uh, give me a shout out over here. Uh, sorry I'm late. I didn't know you were talking about roaches. I've suffered for the past two years with PTSD from a bed bug infestation in my apartment. Sorry, I was off subject there. No, no, no. Uh, this is called the bed bug show, but I answer questions about anything. If you have questions about cockroaches, ask them. If you have questions about fleas, ask them. If you have questions about bed bugs, ask them. If there's anything you need me to answer for you, James, I have no problem talking about bed bugs. Um, I've been dealing with bed bugs now for about 16, 17 years since they took Durzban off the market. It's been one of those things that have been plaguing everybody all over the whole country. So uh, I have no problem answering your questions about bed bugs. Um, sorry, you've been dealing with the bed bug problem. Uh, it does form a, a type of PTSD. It, it, it makes you, you know, to t <laughs> It makes you worry about even going out to a hotel at all. You know, you want to take your family on a vacation, but you don't because you're worried you might bring bed bugs home. Uh, you don't want to go to the library because you're worried that the book you check out from the library is going to have bed bugs in it. Uh, you don't go to the movie theater because you're worried about sitting in the movie theater and the bed bugs crawl on you in the movie theater and they take you take them home with you. You don't want to go and buy anything at Goodwill because you don't know what you're going to bring home with you from Goodwill. Um, you know, you, anything used has the possibility of having bed bugs in it. Uh, it's always been that way with cockroaches, but usually with cockroaches, it's typically ch uh, kitchen appliances. As long as you stay away from your kitchen appliances, you're not going to bring roaches home with you. But with bed bugs, it could be anything. They could be in absolutely anything that you buy used, because depending on how bad the bed bug infestation is, you could be bringing them home with the stuff. They can get in anything. I have seen bed bugs in everything. Uh, so, yeah, but if there's any questions at all, James, I have absolutely no problem a answering them about bed bugs. That's, that's what the show's about. But, uh, you know, like I said, I, I, I want people to know that they can come in here and they don't have to just ask about bed bugs. They can ask about cockroaches or anything they want because I'm here to answer your questions. So if you've got it, ask. That's what I'm here for. Um, but, you know, the thing about German cockroaches is they're a lot like bed bugs because they travel like bed bugs and because they're immune to a lot of chemicals just like bed bugs are there are a lot of similarities uh in treating for bed bugs um if you go into a home and you're treating for german cockroaches and i mean you're a pest control technician or just a homeowner and you find out that the roaches aren't dying or the bed bugs aren't dying it's probably because they're immune to whatever pesticide you're using and you want to switch and use something different um, that's the same. Roaches and, and, and bed bugs are the same. They're the exact same. So if, if, uh, you know, if you're having problems getting rid of your bed bugs, it's because they're immune to the chemical or you may not be hitting the right spots, you know, check and make sure that you're being really thorough, that you're treating, you know, you've got a chemical that you can treat the mattress with. A lot of pesticides won't even allow you to treat the mattress. So, you know, read your labels and make sure it is something that you are allowed to treat your mattress with. Uh, some pesticides that are labeled, for bed bugs, it will specifically state on the label not to be used on mattresses. And if the chemical can't be used on mattresses, is it really going to get rid of your bed bugs? You know, because bed bugs live on the bed. Yes, they can live behind your baseboards. They can live in your wall sockets inside the outlets in your house. Uh, but the majority of them do live on the bed. And if you can't treat the bed, you're not going to get rid of your bed bug problem. So always read your labels and make sure that it's something that you can actually use on your mattress.
Well, thank you, David. That, that, you didn't have to do that. <laughs> David Lopez just donated $2 in Super Chat. I really appreciate that. You didn't have to do that. That's the first person that's ever donated anything to me. <laughs> but thank you. I appreciate that. Um, but yeah, like I said, James, any, any, uh, that, that really threw me. Well, see, now tonight I had that all messed up this uh, earlier for 30 minutes. I was sitting here chatting with my wife and didn't even have my mic on. And then David goes and screws me up donating $2 to my channel tonight. But <laughs> that's the first time anybody's ever done that. I don't know what to say. I don't know what to say, but thank you. Thank you, David. Um, So yeah, if there's any other questions, uh, don't hesitate to ask. Um, I'll be here for a few minutes. Yeah, ask me a question. Oh, that's a good question. All right, my wife, she, all right, she goes, she goes to, she goes to work. Okay, at her job, they have a break room. She asks me, what's the safest place to keep your food? In the break room or at your desk? Can't you just keep it in the car? Or in your car. That's a good one. Or in your car. Uh, safest place is in your car. T hands down. But if you don't want to keep your lunch in your car, let's say it's wintertime like it is now, and you don't want your food to be a brick when you bring it in frozen solid. So what? where do you keep your food? That's a really, really good question. All right. So there's pros and cons to both places. I love that question. That was a really good question. Oh, I wish more people asked me that question. I really wish people would. Okay, so you go and you're working in an office, and you keep your food at your desk because you don't want to mingle your food with your coworkers. You don't know what they've brought home from their kitchen, and you don't want roaches crawling in your lunch bag. That's a really good reason to keep the lunch at your desk. But one of the worst mouse jobs I've ever been on was at a office building that they had warehouse type set up in the back. But any office building is like this because they're all really open to the public. So what happens is people are constantly in and out, in and out, open the door, open the door. Uh, the roaches, uh, roaches. The, the mice will crawl in underneath your desk, and they'll get into your lunch. Um, they'll start eating your lunch in your desk. They'll realize that you have lunch in your desk every day, and they'll start visiting your desk every day. I opened a drawer at a lady's uh, at the office one time where they had this problem with the mice getting in under the desks, eating the lunches. I opened the drawer, and a mouse was in the drawer. And I actually had to reach down. Oh, I, put, I put a glove on, trust me. Re reached down, picked up that mouse with my bare hand. Well, of course, I had a glove on. but uh, So that's a con of keeping your lunch at your desk. A pro is that it's not intermingled with your, with your coworkers, that you don't know if they have roaches at their house or not, or bed bugs for that matter, and you don't want things coming from their lunch bag and getting in yours. So honestly, the best place to keep your lunch would be in your car. But if you can't keep it in your car, uh, don't keep it in the drawer at your desk. You know, keep it where you can see it on the top of your desk where it's not going to be there. You're not going to keep food in your desk all the time. Take it home with you to the end of the day so at night it's not left there where the mice and the rats can find it. And that's what I would suggest you do is not keep it in the break room, but keep it at your desk where you can see it, where it's easy to get a hold of it. Uh, James said that he's used diatomaceous earth uh, to get rid of bed bugs. Now, have you found that that was successful? Because I know a lot of people have used diatomaceous earth, but they have not used it properly. And I get a lot of flack because I tell people not to use diatomaceous earth. I try to advise people not to, and uh, mainly because most people don't use it correctly. But I do have a video coming very soon, hopefully by Monday. Fingers crossed. Uh, I'll be able to get this video out to you Monday and uh, showing you exactly how to dust. I'm going to show you how to dust for cockroaches and bed bugs in the same video. So, uh, because a lot of people do not dust properly, and I don't want to give people the wrong impression by not using diatomaceous earth. I want them to know how to use it and use it correctly. Because I'm all about saving my customers money, saving you money, and there's no reason that you need to waste your money, even if it's just $10, $13 a bag for diatomaceous earth. It's not that much money. 
But, you know, if you're going to throw your money away, do you really want to throw away $13? Just take it and grind it up in a food processor or something and get rid of it. You know, you don't want to do that. So I'm going to show you how to actually dust appropriately and how it works. Now, some people use a, um, a paintbrush, and they'll take it and they'll, they'll uh, put the diatomaceous earth around. And that's, that's a good way to use it, but it's not really the most effective way for bed bugs. And I'm going to show you how to do that. Uh, hopefully Monday, this this coming Monday. I'm, I've got a couple of things I need to film. Uh, it takes me a little bit longer to film the how-to because I have to uh, splice and, and cut and splice and cut the stuff together. And uh, it takes longer to process those videos. But, um, you know, a lot of my videos, if you've watched much of my channel, it's just mainly just me talking. And most of them are done in one take, to tell you the truth. And so I don't have to do a whole lot of video editing. The more editing I have to do, the longer it takes, and I may not have enough time to get them out, which is why my channel has slowed up so much lately because I've got so many things on my plate right now where I'm, I am, I'm trying to give people quality content, but it's taken me a lot longer to create that. So uh, James says, I have moved since I've thrown everything away, and what I kept I put in a storage room storage rooms can harbor bed bugs. I had a lady that brought bed bugs home from their storage room uh, where they were harboring bed bugs. So it is possible to bring them in from a storage room. Sorry, I thought I had a tweet. Um, and if somebody tweets, sometimes, I mean, you could tweet me and I will I answer your question live on, uh, on the, the show. So uh, if you do tweet me, I do answer those lives if you don't want it to be broadcast in the live chat where everybody can read it. So uh, people can go and read my Twitter. They might be able to read it. But you could send me private messages in Twitter, too. If you do send me a private message there, I will not read your name over uh, the chat. And it'll all be completely uh, private between me and you. And I can answer the question live, but I won't read your name. So if, you're, uh, if you don't want people to know who you are, you don't want them to know your handle, you're, you're welcome to send private messages to me over on Twitter or Facebook, and I will ans answer them live. In fact, a couple of the last questions I got uh, through YouTube and my Facebook account, I actually made videos on because I thought, well, that's a good idea. I'm going to go ahead and make a video on that because people need to know about that. So, um, but James, if, uh, <coughs> excuse me, drink water. There's my health tip for the day. <laughs> um, so, <coughs> what I would suggest you do, James, it says now from what I'm gathering from what you're telling me, I, ju I just kind of, I think I kind of got it. I don't think I caught it right away. It says, uh, I have moved since. I've thrown everything away, and what I kept, I put in storage. Okay. So if you've thrown everything away, and you think you've gotten rid of your bed bugs, but you're, you're wanting to be cautious about moving the stuff back in because it might have bed bugs in it, this is what I suggest you do. And this is what I suggest everybody do. If you go to a hotel, and you're worried that you might bring them in from a hotel, you want to treat your entire house or your apartment before you bring the stuff in. That way, when the bed bugs emerge from whatever you've brought in the house, whether it's furniture, luggage, uh, books, you know, anything like that, the bed bugs have nowhere to go but in a treated area. So that's just one way to keep yourself safe. Um, I advise people, I, this, this is top advice, is I advise you to have monthly pest control. Now, obviously this is YouTube, it's worldwide, you can't hire me. Um, that's why I'm, I'm saying it now, because I, I want people to understand that pest control will help you keep bed bugs out of your house. Even if you're using chemicals that aren't labeled to use on beds or mattresses or box springs, the chemical has a residual and it will kill the bed bugs if they get in your house. If you bring your luggage in your house, you won't have to worry. You won't have to have the problem like James here where he's worried. He's got, like I said, 
he said PTSD. He's really worried over these things. He's had them before. They're awful. They're m miserable. If you really don't want them and you're really worried you might get them, just get regular pest control. Uh, this is what I do for my customers, and personally, this is what I think every pest control technician should do. Um, people that are your regular customers that you treat every month, most customers are monthly. You treat your house. You constantly have a residual pesticide down. If someone brings bed bugs in the house, cut them a break. You know, give them, give them a deal. Don't, char don't overcharge them. Don't go and say, well, now I've got to charge you a couple thousand dollars to get rid of bed bugs. Just do what you can to get rid of them as effective as you can and save them as much money as you can because they're already a regular customer. They're, it's like the cable company coming in and charging old customers more money and new customers less money. It doesn't look good. It looks like you care more about your new customers than you do your lifetime customers. I've got customers that have been customers for over 20 years, that have been with me forever, that have watched me literally grow up, that are still my customers to this day, that have moved with me as I have moved from different companies. And even when I started my own business, they came with me. They followed me like their hairdresser. And it wasn't because I tried to overcharge them. It's because I give them the best deal for their money and they know they can trust that I'm going to do the job right because I'm not out to gouge them for every little penny that I can. You know, I, I make a living, but I also, uh, I'm, I'm fair to my customers. Yes, yes, they can, James. James asks, can nymphs actually swim through foam or like cushions on your couch or your bed mattress? Yes, they can. <coughs> they can do that. <coughs> Excuse me, I'm sorry. I'm this creeping crud. If you've watched my live streams, I've had it ever since I've started my live streams. I can't get rid of this stupid cough, so you'll have to forgive me. It's that time of year, and Virginia is so bipolar it can't decide what chemical. I mean, chemical. It doesn't decide what what temperature it's going to be. Your statement is great business sense. Lots of other places like the cable company are greedy and don't care for customers. Yeah, that's that's true. It's a shame, but that's the way it is, you know. And uh, I pride myself on, um, and I'm not tooting my own horn, but I do pride myself on customer service. Uh, my customers call me uh, anytime. I'm open 24 hours. It's a fact. Let me show you here. Let's see, let's see here if I can move this picture. That's not the one. Is it going to let me grab it? There it is. There. See? 24 hours on my car. Everybody that sees that car with me flying down the road, 24-hour uh, pest control. So people can call me anytime. And I'm, you know, I'm a one-man band. You know, I don't have anybody really working for me yet. Now, I'm hoping to change that by the end of the year. But as it sits right now, I, uh, you know, I'm a one-man show. So if people call me at 3 o'clock in the morning and they need me on an emergency, I go out, I do it. I've, I've done it. I have done it. So, uh, yeah, James, you talk about the puffer? Yeah. Uh, um, is it a, uh, a bellows duster? Those things are really good. <coughs> <coughs> Man, I can't, I can't hide that. I'm going to have to mute that next time I have the. But then I'll be muted, and you'll never know I'm here, and I won't know you're here either. So, but uh, anyway, well, it's been almost an hour and a half now, and here I am still talking, running my mouth. Uh, of course, it's been about two hours elapsed time. I'm still beating myself up over sitting here talking with a mic muted like I did. So uh, if there's any more questions before I decide to log out of here, i got six people watching. If any of you guys have any questions at all, uh, now's your time to ask before I head on to bed. Uh, so if you have any questions, uh, don't hesitate to ask me. Uh, I don't mind ask, answering anything you got. Let's see if I can do this without turning this light off. If I can fix that, that's a little bit. Oh, I think I fixed it. There we go. 
Uh, you can actually buy those little hand bellows dusters at Walmart, too. They sell them for like $12. You can get them mailed right to your house. So they're not very expensive. Amazon, uh, different places. Here, let me show you if I can. Uh, there's the browser window I was using earlier now. Let me see if I can find it. There it is. This is Walmart. I bet I spelled that wrong. Oh, no, I didn't. See? Right here? This is what I use. This is the actual tool that I use. This is a, a hand duster for insects and plants. It's uh, very effective, and it's at Walmart. I mean, you can get it on walmart.com. Uh, there's other kinds. You know, they sell other kinds, too. Oh, there's a Swiffer duster. That's not what I'm talking about. <laughs> but, yeah, this hand bellows duster right here, that's really effective. Really, really effective uh at at treating because if you take if you take this little tip off right here that's a little point and you could get that into places and dust behind baseboards uh you know it, it's really effective you can make a little tiny hole in the matting underneath a box spring and you could treat inside the box spring i usually recommend you take that whole piece of felt off though and actually treat it with a with a liquid insecticide that'll last uh like with crossfire or alpine is really effective uh in those spots um, especially around the boards where the boards go together, like I was showing you. I'm going to put those. I need to put those pictures up on my Instagram. I'll put those on my Instagram since I got Don following me now. I'll go ahead and put them up tonight, so you can see some some pretty good pictures of uh, uh, bed bugs on a on a mattress. But um, those are places. Or actually, it's a box spring. But typically, the bed bugs live in a box spring. They don't typically live on a mattress. So, yeah, the paintbrush, now, see, the problem with, now, paintbrushes can be effective to, to do the, the dusting, but I find that you get better coverage with a bellows duster. Um, it's forced air, so it's going to push it, it's, it's going to force it into the cracks and stuff where you can't, the brush is just not going to get the dust to go in those spots. Uh, I don't care what people say. A lot of people swear by the brush method, but um, from all the research I've done, I have found that it is not effective. That the I mean not as effective not it's not that it isn't effective to use a uh, the the paintbrush it works that's why people do it but it's more effective to use a bellows duster that's just what I've found and and if you puff it in like underneath your couch uh, or in your um like not under the couch but actually in that little piece of felt make a little hole little bitty hole and you can puff it in there and it's going to go everywhere it's gonna f it's gonna puff just the right amount. It's going to fill that void with that dust, and it's going to settle on those boards, and it's going to settle up inside that sofa or bed, and it's going to be really effective there. And you can use diatomaceous earth because it's not an insecticide, so it doesn't really have a label, and you can apply it in a lot of places that you can't, you can't apply an insecticide. So places you can't put the pesticide, you can put the diatomaceous earth, and it will still kill the bugs there. Because what I tell people is if there's a spot that you think you don't need to treat or you might need to treat, treat that area. Uh, treat everywhere. Everywhere you question, treat it. It's not a question. Treat it. So if you can do it, treat it. Follow the label always. If, if you ever follow my channel and you know you know I'm a, I'm a stickler for labels, I can't tell you to go against the label, although you know if you're not a trained professional like me, you're not licensed, you could go against the label. You know, There's nothing that says you can't break label. Um, there are a lot of chemicals out there that will kill bed bugs, but you have to break the label to use them in the way to kill bed bugs. And I don't really promote that. So, you know, but there are things out there. There's, I've had exterminators actually tell me that, oh yeah, I use this pesticide to kill bed bugs all the time. It really kills them. And I read the label and I'm like, you can't use it that way, you know, but he's you, he's doing it. You know, there are people that do that. I don't want to poison anybody. I don't want to risk making people sick. That's why I don't do it. Uh, I've also used yeast and sugar to make a CO2 trap. Yeah, I've seen that. I had a guy, I watched a guy's video on that CO2 trap. I'd like to try some of those. But personally, I like I said, because I use, I've got so much money invested in pesticides and dusts and things like that, and it works. I just use those, and, and I've, I've had really good success with them. But uh, I, I don't hesitate to show people different traps and different methods and things they can make and use it themselves and use in their own home. But uh, I don't like to advise people. Like, I'm, I've got some uh, bait I'm going to make. And I don't know if you were here to catch me saying that or not, but I'm going to make some roach baits and I'm going to make some ant, ant baits and uh, show people how to make baits themselves from just things you buy over the counter. Um, if you're, And the only reason you'd want to make these is if the bait that's already available isn't working. Uh, this, the thing about ants, 
ants are really smart. You know, people don't give them enough credit, but ants are really, really smart insects. Uh, when it comes to baiting for ants, a lot of times, if, see, all right, so what happens is the workers come out, they forage for food. They pick up the food, they take it back, and they feed the reproductives, the young, the babies, everything. They, they're feeding those the food. The reproductives take that food, turn around, and make something the workers can then ingest and eat. The workers don't actually eat the bait. They're feeding it to the reproductives that then feed the food back to the workers. What will happen is the workers will bring bait back. It will feed, it will kill a few of the reproductives, and then the workers don't get the food that they need to die. So, uh, wow, that's really, that's really messing with my head. <laughs> but um, <coughs> anyway, like I was saying, the, so the reproductives will take the food back. It, it, I mean, the, the workers take the food back. It kills the reproductives. The reproductives then don't kill the workers. So then it doesn't really do anything. And then the workers will actually go back and mark that bait with pheromones that will tell the rest of the colony, stay away from that. It's poison. Don't take that. It's poison. It kills ants. So understand that that is how smart they are. So if store-bought ant bait isn't working like Taro is one. Uh, there's several different brands out there that they like combat different ones. Um, you don't want to use if they don't work, don't use them. I'm going to show you how to make a bait that will work. It's an alternative, but and it may they may not take that either. You know, if you find that the ants are taking that bait and they're or they're not taking it anymore, then they've probably become wise to that too, and you want to try something different. So, and you can change your formula if you're making it at home yourself. You could change your formula. Uh, sometimes ants will come after sugar. It depends on what the colony needs. They may need carbohydrates. If that's the case, they're going to go after sugar. If they need protein, you'll find the ants will like swarm dead bugs and stuff like that because the colony needs protein. It's whatever the colony needs is what the colony gets. They don't always go after sugar. A lot of people will say, oh, I just got a problem with those sweet ants. But you'll go into the house and you'll find that the ants aren't actually getting into the sugar, that they're getting into like a meat packet or an old hot dog packet or something like that somebody left out or they found a piece of rotten meat or something, or a dead bug or something like that. They're not actually going to sugar at all, but they're going after meats. And so it just depends on what the colony wants. And so if you find that the colony is going after protein, then you'll want to mix in, mix your, you know, mix your bait accordingly. Um, oh, yeah, I, I, don't, I don't wish I lived in Arizona. I like Virginia. <laughs> I don't, I don't want to live in the heat of Arizona. I'm a wimp. I know people say, well, it's a dry heat. Well, it's still hot. I, I don't like heat, whether it's dry, wet, any heat. I don't like heat. I like the winter, but then the bugs aren't around, so I don't make any living. So, <laughs> so I prefer the warm weather for, for uh, business purposes, but I like the cold weather just because I'm a cold weather person. I like it cold. I get out. I split wood. I stay warm. You know, I got a fire burning in the wood stove right now, even though it's, you know, it's supposed to be below freezing tonight. So I got a wood, I got a fire in a wood stove. So, but I, I wouldn't like living in Arizona myself. I don't want to deal with scorpions and all the things you got out there. I don't think it'd be fun for me. But I'm sure I'd stay busy. Arizona has some bugs. They got lots of bugs out there. Some pretty cool videos I've seen of people killing bugs out in Arizona. So, but anyway, uh, well, I, I guess this is this is it. It's uh, been a little over an hour now that I've been on here. Well, about an hour and a half now, and I'm gonna have to download this VOD and fix it and splice it and fix it and so I'm sorry for everybody that was here early and sticking with me and being patient with me tonight uh, if there are any more questions before I have to log off like I say I'll stay here as long as I'm needed if you uh you know if you want to talk want to ask me a question I'm here uh otherwise I'm gonna I'm gonna head on out of here so it's getting pretty late it's about 11 30 here so I'll go ahead and, and give you a couple minutes to ask a question if you have anything you want to ask me. Otherwise, I'm going to head on out of here. Oh, and by the way, you can catch me live on Friday nights. I, I try my best to stream every Friday night at 10 o'clock Eastern time. Uh, so if you live like Arizona or Texas or, you know, California, somewhere like that, you need to, you know, figure out your time accordingly. Uh, 10 o'clock here. If it's in California, it'll be, what, 7, 7 o'clock there. So I try to do it at 10 o'clock so that, you know, it works for most all time zones, at least in the United States now. I know if you're over in England, it's going to be quite a bit early uh, in the morning. And so you may not be able to catch me live. 
But uh, for any questions that you might have, if you know I'm going to be streaming, you can always text the text them to me at Green Acres PC at tweet uh, Twitter, or you can send them to my YouTube. Uh, not me. Well, you can you could actually send them to YouTube. All my messages there, or you could send a message to uh, Facebook too, if you have any questions. Yeah. Well, yeah, James, as long as it stays hot for a while. You know, the problem with storage units is they get cold at night. They'll be warm, hot during the day, but if the temperature dips down at nighttime and it gets down below, you know, 110 degrees, that's one person actually said on my, one of my videos about heat treatments, said that heat will kill bed bugs at 110. That's actually not true. It has to be uh, 118 degrees to kill an adult bed bug. And it has to be a, a 125 to kill the eggs. The eggs are actually heat resistant. So heat doesn't kill the eggs unless they're at least 125 degrees or hotter. So it has to get that way and stay that way for, I think it's like eight hours, um, which is the majority of the day. So as long as you've got a nice, long, hot day, then yes, it will kill the bed bugs. And if it's getting hot that way every day and it's staying that hot every day, then yes, it will eventually kill them. But what it'll do is it'll chase the bed bugs over into the temperature controlled units and they'll go back and forth because typically in a storage unit facility, they'll have um, they'll have temperature controlled units and they'll have your standard unit that doesn't have any temperature control at all. And the reason they have temperature controlled units is for people with like antique furniture, pianos, things like that that can't get hot and they can't get too cold. And so they'll keep them in those units. They pay a little more money for it to be air conditioned or heated. And so uh, that'll protect that furniture. But it'll also protect bed bugs. And so the bed bugs will go back and forth. Uh, James says, well, I'll hit you up later. I think you probably should go. I came in late, asked you a lot of questions, and did not answer. You did not answer. It's all good, though. Well, what were your questions? I didn't understand what your questions were. I kind of thought they were just statements. I didn't actually think you were asking me questions. Um, you asked some questions about some nymphs swimming through the furniture, and they do. Uh, let's see. If you bought that, if you yeah. I, didn't, I thought I answered all your questions. Well, if there's anything that I didn't answer, ask me. I'll, I'll answer what, whatever you got. I don't mind. I don't want to upset you. Let me see. Let me scroll up. It's going to scroll for the chat, too. Uh, diatomaceous earth. Yeah, I didn't I didn't actually. Maybe I was just uh, conf confused. I thought you were. I didn't know you were asking me questions. I thought you were just making statements about what you had done and what you had tried to do. But, um. Yeah, sorry about that. I was kind of confused. I'm just a simple guy from Virginia. You gotta, you gotta drill it into me. You gotta be real direct with me. I'm, I'm, I don't catch on. So, but anyway, you guys have a really great night. I'm gonna head on to bed, and I'll be uh, talking to you later. Thanks.